Welcome to the official Journey to Grandmaster AFK Journey series. In this series, we aim to provide you videos and guides to help you understand and enjoy the game to its fullest potential in your early days of playing. This video will provide you with an understanding of the core mechanics and systems in the game, including but not limited to overworld and map, heroes, artifacts, AFK stages and loot, combat, game modes, the mystic house and summoning. The bulk of your questing and exploring happens in the overworld, so let's understand the basics to the overworld first. To control your character and move around, if you are on PC you can use the WASD keys, however if you are on a phone you can just use your finger to guide yourself around. Now, now, when you want to interact with an object, whether it be an enemy, a plant to pick, or a chest to open, you will use the F key on a PC, or on mobile, you will just tap the interaction button. Now, if you want to get a broader look at everything around you, you can hit the map button. And once you have explored in an area, it will light up and show you everything in that area. Now, if you want to travel to something, whether it be enemies or chests or even puzzles on the map, you can just click on them and then click the foot and it will auto path you towards it. So if you need to get to something quick that you missed along the way, this is the easiest way without having to try and manually find your way around. Moving on from that, we have the quest log. Now, you can interact with it by by clicking on the book just under the mini map and this will open up your quest log. Now you have story quests, you also have side quests which are blue, story quests being the gold, and then we have town quests which are purple as well. Now to get to some of these quests you can choose which one you want to track by clicking the crosshairs. Ideally normally in the early game you are going to be following that main quest though and if you do want to get to the objectives on that quest you can actually just click the text that has the quest title and it will auto path you to that and teleport you to the closest waypoint and then auto path your character. Now if that doesn't work for you there is a setting that may be turned off which if you go into your settings and scroll down you can see the auto route beta turn that on and that will allow the auto pathing if you just find your character standing still when you click it. So for the early part of the game the main thing you want to be doing is following your main quest line whilst also defeating enemies around the world and collecting loot because it does give you some good bonuses to help you with your progression but eventually you will get stuck in your progression and we will talk about that in a minute after we talk about characters. To access your hero roster, you will click on the resonating hall down in the bottom middle of the screen. This will take you to the resonating hall where we have a bunch of different things to look at. The first of which is the Hands of Resonance. This is essentially your top five characters and they're the only ones you have to level. And leveling these characters will bring up the level of all your other characters to the level of the lowest level of your top five. So here you can see the lowest level is 130, which brings all my other heroes up to 130. If I then brought that character up to 140, all my other characters would also be 140. So that is the way your character levels work, and it is very convenient to not have to level every character on your roster. Now, if you might maybe want one of your other characters to be brought up to that level 140, you can do that as well. We hit the little quill in the right hand corner here, and that will bring up this screen. Now we can freely swap our characters around to bring other characters up to different levels. So no matter what level your characters are, you can always bring different characters up to suit your needs. The next thing we'll look at is the characters themselves. Now, when we jump in here, you can see that we can actually ascend our characters. To do that, you will either need duplicates of the character or you will need acorns, which you can obtain through summoning and we will look at that a little bit later on. Now, besides that, we can go ahead and on the right hand side, click on the skill page and this takes us to our character's skills. Now, if you want a more basic understanding of the skills, you can hit this light button on the right hand side and it will give you a very basic description. But for those that want more information, you can hit full and it will give you full multipliers and descriptions of the abilities. Now, at base, our characters get three abilities with three other abilities that unlock as you ascend them higher at Legendary Plus, Mythic Plus and Supreme Plus. To level up your characters, you will simply click on the character itself and then the level up button will be on the bottom right hand side. Now for any level ending in a 1 or a 9, all you will need to level up your character is gold and experience. However, at every 10 levels, these are limit break levels, that being level 10 to 11. 20 to 21 and so on and so forth 
For these levels, you will also need an additional resource called Hero Essence. And these are all resources that you will naturally obtain through playing the game. Other features we have in the Resonating Hall include the collections. Now, this is where you can go take a look at heroes you haven't yet obtained, along with enemies and other mechanisms inside the game. Further than that, we have our squad settings, and this is where you can select characters to deploy that will follow you around in the overworld while you are playing. Next, we have our equipment which is a very intuitive system. Instead of equipping different gear to every character, instead we equip gear to classes, being that the gear you have equipped to the class in the equipment will give all characters of that class the benefits of the equipment. So there's no longer need to get multiple pieces of gear for the same type of characters. They all essentially share in the same gear. Now, to get the gear, you can just obtain it naturally. Sometimes you will gain some chests, which you can open and get random or select pieces of gear. And then you can also forge it using pieces of other pieces of gear that you have collected along the way to get yourself some more beneficial gear. Now, each of these pieces will have different stats and effects, so definitely consider this when forging gear for different characters and classes. And the final thing we have to look at in the resonating hall is the artifacts. Now, you will get different artifacts along the way, and you can upgrade them as well once you get the required resources. Now, artifacts are different buffs that you can gain in combat that will give you different benefits benefits depending on which artifact you equip and there is going to be di many different ways you can use these in combat to give yourself the edge. As we mentioned earlier, eventually you will get stuck in your progression and normally that will happen at Miasma Guards. Now these are guards that you need to defeat to enter into new zones of the map that you haven't yet been there and to continue on your main quest line, you need to break these walls. Now, often the thing that's going to be stopping you from progressing through these will be your AFK stage progression. So that is the perfect time to talk about combat and AFK stages. Now, if you click the AFK progression in the bottom left hand side, this is where you'll be able to collect AFK loot and also progress through AFK stages up the top. And these are the things that you are required to make meet to go ahead and challenge some of these Miasma Guards. So if we go over into AFK progression, we can hit the battle button. And this is where you will fight stage after stage, continually defeating enemies and climbing the ranks, which will also give you rewards like diamonds, summons, hero essence, and gear chests. So progressing this along the way is going to be very important because as you progress, it will also increase your AFK loot that you obtain per hour. So this is going to be fantastic for leveling your heroes faster as you progress. Now, on top of that, we do have fast rewards here, which you can collect up to two times per day, depending on how far progressed you are in the game. And by collecting this, it will give you an instant two hours worth of AFK loot that you can then use to upgrade your characters. Now, when we go into combat, let's take a look at the core functionality of combat. Now, in combat, you can bring up to five heroes and place them around the board as you wish. Now, on top of that, we do have faction bonuses so keep in mind deploying characters of the same faction can give you extra stat benefits to help you in battle now, in general, we're going to have things like tanks who normally want to be at the front of combat. We have damage dealers who want to be a bit further back. And then we have our supports and healers that can be used to support and heal our team as well. Now, there is many different team combinations and formations you can use, ranging from grouped formations like this. You can also aim for spread formations where you aim to spread the damage and have all your characters survive from your healers. There is many different ways, but in general, playing with one or two tanks, one or two healers, and then one or two DPS, making sure you have all the roles covered and then adding in two more that fit the roles you need for a certain fight is going to be the general way to get started in combat. Now, once you have the team formation set up in a way that you are happy with, you can then go ahead and click battle and this will enter us into combat. And once we're in combat, we can either put it on manual or auto. We also have the two times speed function. Now, if you put it on manual, it will allow you to control when you activate your ult and also where to activate them. But for the general early stages, if you just want a basic progression, you can just leave it on auto. And if you get defeated, we can once ahead go ahead and retry, which we will 
be retrying a lot once you get to some harder stages that you are struggling in. And from there, if you do start failing, that is when you start adjusting your formation. Now, the other thing that we can adjust is our artifacts. As mentioned before in the artifact section, we do have a bunch of different artifacts in the game that can give us different benefits from healing our allies, from dealing damage to all enemies, to also buffing the ally at the back to make them get more attack speed. So there is a broad range of ways that you can adjust your combat strategy using the artifacts as well to try and help you achieve some victories. Next, we'll look at daily activities and game modes. Let's kick it off with the quest tab, which is over in the bottom right hand side. You can click on this and you will have different uh, quests from growth trials ranging into guild quests, ranging into daily quests. Now, you definitely want to complete all your daily quests every day because you do get some nice rewards from doing them. They're not nothing too crazy. You should be able to knock these over in a about five to 10 minutes on an average day. Now, after we look at that, we do have the events tab. Now in the events tab, we have obviously events that are ongoing and there will be several different events at launch that you can jump in and check out what's going on and complete the events through the events tab. Moving on past that, we have the Noble Pass, which is kind of like your battle pass in other games. And this is where you're going to complete missions on a daily, weekly, and also challenge basis to collect more rewards and progress your way along the Noble Path. Now, as we move on from those things, you can click this bottom right-hand menu to get a more expanded view of the different things. We have our friends, which you can add friends over here. And as you add friends, you want to send and receive gifts. And if you get 10 friends to send you a gift each day, you will get a nice little chest at the end with some rewards. Moving on from that, you have your mail. Now check your mail every day because you will get your arena rewards in the mail to collect there. Now, moving on past that, I want to look at the game modes because the game modes are going to be a core part of the game that you want to complete every day. We have a dream realm. Now, in the dream realm, every day you will have a different boss to battle. Now, you can go ahead and collect your rewards from the previous day by clicking on the ladder button. And then you can go ahead and challenge each boss every day. And the game has basic strategies uh, that you can follow and characters that are recommended, but we will have further guides in the future. Next up is the arena. Now, this is where you're going to have four free challenges per day to go ahead and battle people in the PvP arena. Now, in general, aiming for enemies with lower power than you is a good start, but it will also take some formation synergy to do that. You can also buy up to an additional five attacks per day if that's the kind of thing you're into and you will get different rewards daily and weekly based on your ranking and you will also get victory rewards weekly based on how many victories you have along with rewards for the first time you achieve a rank including a good chunk of diamonds as well that can go towards your summons. Next, we have Honor Jewel. Now, this is a draft-based, balanced PvP-type mode where you're going to get different characters through draft to battle different enemies. Now, we're not going to go too in-depth into this one, but it is definitely a more advanced feature that you can have a lot of fun in. So definitely go ahead and check this one out and collect the rewards you can get along the way. Moving on from that is the Arcane Labyrinth. Now we have different difficulties of the Arcane Labyrinth, which have different requirements to activate it. As you can see here, you have to clear the previous difficulty, but also obtain a certain number of heroes at a specific ascension. So as you go into the Labyrinth, you can jump in, you can select your heroes that you want to bring into the Labyrinth, and you will go stage by stage, gaining different buffs for your characters to help you defeat enemies. And once you defeat the final enemy, that is when you have completed the stage, you will get the one timer ward and be able to move on to the next stage provided you have met those prerequisites. And then we have the Legend Trial. Now, think of this as faction towers. You will have different towers available to you on different days. You go into these and you can only bring heroes from that specific faction. And challenge, challenging these and climbing the ranks will reward you with summons along with hero essence and ascension materials. Now that we have game modes out of the way, let's jump into the Mystical House, which you can find in the bottom menu in the middle of the screen. Now, over here, we have several things. You have your mailbox, which once again, you can get through the other menu as well, which is where you're going to get your daily arena points and any compensation or maintenance rewards that will come along the way. Next, we have Mystic Collection. Think of this as achievements. And as you unlock more achievements, you will unlock different benefits from doing these achievements. Now, these aren't something you actively have to work towards. Just 
through playing the game, you will work towards these and unlock more features. Then we have the Emporium. Now, this is essentially your shop with a bunch of different shop styles. We have the Guild Store, which you can use Guild Points to collect Celestial and Hypergene characters. And you can also use Diamonds on a daily or monthly basis to get some additional summons as well at a discount. Then we have the Arena Store. This is where you're going to spend your Arena Points to get some Epic Heroes. The Dream Store is where you're going to spend your Dream Points to go ahead and acquire some Elite Heroes. And then over here in the Friendship Store is where you're going to get gifts that you can go ahead and gift to your characters to increase your bond levels with them. And finally, we have the Noble Tavern, which is where all the magic happens and summoning. So we have four different tabs over here. Now we have three just standard summon tabs and then Stargazing, which unlocks after you've done four. 400 normal summons. Now in the raid up tab, this is where if we have a banner for a raid up character, you will be able to obtain them. Now when we look at the rates here, it's a 3% rate to get that hero. And if you do get an epic hero, it is guaranteed to be that hero. And it is a 40 pity. Moving on to the all hero recruitment. This is where you're going to use your standard summon passes that you get along the way. And for this one, we do have a 60 pity on it. And our rates at acquiring an epic hero is going to be 2.05. You also have a wish list that you can put the heroes you really want the most in here. And when you get a hero, it is guaranteed to be one of those heroes. Now, moving on past that, we have epic recruitment. Now, these are a better form of summons that you will also get along the way through different means, including chests around the world. Now, this has a 30 pity. And when we take a look at the prize pool rates, we have a 5.22% chance at getting those epic heroes. Now, for this one, the wish list, the elite heroes on the wish list here will be the elite heroes that have carried over from your all hero recruitment wish list. However, when we look at the epic heroes, you only have five on the wish list here. So you will have to set this wish list independently for your epic heroes. And then we finally have the Stargazer Station. Now, this is going to use a different currency called Stellar Crystals, which you can't obtain until you've done 400 summons accumulatively on your account. And in this one, the special thing is we have a bunch of different items we can collect here. But the big thing is this is where we can select Celestial and Hyper gene characters to go ahead and put on the wish list and we can target a specific one and when you get the character you are guaranteed to get that character that you are targeting. So that is going to be it for our first video in this series. And if you are looking for more information or guides on AFK Journey, there are many fantastic creators making content on both Reddit and YouTube. You can go ahead and have a browse there and find out some more information. And if you are making content or want to try your hand at making content, there is a creator program that will be linked in the description of this video. Just click the link and you can go ahead and apply to join the creator program along with myself and many other creators. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome day and I look forward to seeing the next one. Cheers.